Hello and welcome fellow Hearthstone players to another episode of Lore of the Cards. This episode we're going to ride the expansion hype train before its fast approaching release and take a look at Goblins vs Gnomes. In this episode we will take a brief look at the races, their origins and how this rivalry came to be. If you want more expansion content on its release, let me know. I'll do a Goblins and Gnomes month, covering a card a week on some of the lore characters that appear within the expansion. Let me know if that appeals. So, let's start with the origins of the race that I currently main in World of Warcraft. The Goblins. I'm also a troll fan. These minute green-skinned humanoids hail from the island of Kazan. Long ago, this race now known for their flair for invention didn't possess even a portion of the intellect they now boast. The Goblins Island home, which they now rule over, was not always theirs. Before the Goblins, the dominant race upon the island had been the Jungle Trolls. While the Trolls intellect was basic, it was still greater than that of the Goblins at the time. This and their greater physical strength meant that they were able to put the Goblins to work as slaves. The goblins were forced to work in the mines below the surface of Kazan, as the trolls did not like venturing underneath the earth. It was during this time that the goblins made an interesting discovery. They found a strange mineral, which came to be called Kajamite, named after Mount Kajaro, one of the most striking landmarks on Kazan. The trolls started using the mineral in their voodoo practices, so set the goblins to mining large quantities of it. As the dim-witted goblins gathered more of the Kajamite, they began to sense that the mineral had properties and enchantments that the trolls had not yet discovered. They began to hoard the mineral within the undermines, that would later be converted into their capital, and fashioned crude objects using the mineral. This tampering with the Kajamite gave off a rather unexpected side effect. The entire race's intellect began to grow at quite an alarming rate. Soon, the goblins were constructing crude weapons and armour. As well as their intellect growing, the goblins' ability to form tactics also increased. Soon, they had devised a plan to overthrow their troll masters. Not long after, the goblins acted on their plan and reversed their role with the trolls. They were now the masters of Kazan, putting the trolls to work as their slaves and founding their capital of the Undermines. With the Alliance's gnomes, we know exactly when the race came into existence. The gnomes started life as machinery, fitting since they would later become one of the races best known for their ability for invention and mastery of machinery. The first mecha gnomes were created by the titanic watcher Mimiron, who in turn was created by Azeroth's shapers, the Titans. It would appear that the titanic watchers were created to keep watch over the Titans' work on Azeroth. Mimiron, along with several other Watchers, were later tasked with overlooking the prison of yogg -Saron, one of the destructive Old Gods that thrived in the chaotic Azeroth before the Titans brought order to the world. Mimiron created the Mecha Gnomes in his image, and it's not 100% known as to why he made them, though an educated guess can be made. It is likely that the Mecha Gnomes were created in order to help the Titans shape Azeroth, like their gnomish descendants, the mecha gnomes are more than capable mechanics. All races created by the titans were made of either stone or metal. This meant that their creations were able to carry out the duties assigned to them by the titans, without fear of deterioration or growing tired. Due to their hatred of the titans, the old gods devised a method of sabotaging their design. The Curse of Flesh, which afflicted a huge proportion of the Titans' races. The Mogu, the Dwarves, the Sea Giants, and of course, the Gnomes, to name but a few. It was recently discovered that the fleshy variant of Gnomes are able to be transformed back to their original state. Though most of the race that have experienced this change much prefer the way they are now. Now their own masters, and with a source of Kajamite to draw from, the goblins' intellect grew at an exponential rate, and were the first race to discover steam technology. 
It is rumoured that at their intellectual peak, goblin design and invention of the past was more advanced and surpassed that of current day dwarven technology. However, there was a finite supply of Kajamite, and it ran dry. The source of their great intelligence now gone, the goblins, in a desperate bid to find more of the mineral, spread out over the face of Azeroth. For thousands of years, they searched for any remaining pockets of the mineral, and 500 years before the first war between orcs and humans, they could find no more. Without the Kajamite to further their minds, the goblins were unable to reproduce or maintain their brilliant creations of old. The race were still capable inventors and mechanics, but their inventions devolved into crude, unrefined machinery, like the shredders that have been announced for goblins versus gnomes. The trade of their machinery plummeted, and the other races now feared the rickety, unreliable creations of the goblin engineers. They had gained a reputation for spontaneously exploding. The goblins had always had a love for gold, and with the devolution of their intellect, they fully embraced commerce. Now if you are adventuring in the world of Azeroth, whether it be in Alliance or Horde territory, you'll more than likely stumble across a goblin merchant, who will sell you their goods at only a slightly inflated price. The now fleshy gnomes spent a lot of their existence in isolation. Their first widely documented interaction with another race occurred around 200 years before the events of the Burning Crusade expansion. The dwarves that discovered the gnomes were awestruck by their technological ingenuity. While the dwarves had only just discovered gunpowder, the gnomes had a fully automated city, with novelties such as mechanical chickens. The contact between dwarves and gnomes became more frequent, and eventually the two races became staunch allies, the dwarves allowing the gnomes to build their capital city Gnomeregan close to their giant mountain city of Ironforge. Dwarves and gnomes happily sharing resources in the region of Dunmoroch. How true this version of events is, is up for debate, as there have been inconsistencies in the lore about the discovery of the gnomish race. While the dwarves are also capable engineers and inventors, it is the gnomes that provide the visionary designs for most of the dwarves' weapons and battle vehicles, such as the mighty siege tank. Goblin machinery is quite volatile, the energetic race moving on to their next invention very quickly, growing tired of their work on the first, but sometimes forgetting key components in the first to actually make it function correctly. Gnomish invention is more refined. While accidents do happen, they are far less likely to happen to a gnome's invention than a goblin's. The gnomes are known for tinkering with their machines just because it's finished does not mean it cannot be improved and worked further on, even if that so-called improvement causes the invention to blow up. While goblins jump straight into construction, gnomes will fastidiously plan out their actions, always drawing up blueprints first. The different approaches show in the final designs, goblin tech being rough and gnomish tech being sleek and refined. The advantage of the goblins is that they mass produce their machines, which means more to sell on and a plentiful supply for those they are trading with. While gnomish design is higher in quality, its production is a lot slower. Gnomes and goblins were dragged into the war between orcs and humans during the event known as the Second War. This is when the rivalry between gnomes and goblins began in full force. Seeing the destructive capabilities of the orcs, the dwarves and the gnomes entered into an alliance with the humans to put a stop to the threat of the orcs. The gnomes provided the alliance with gyrocopters to scout out their enemies and submarines to discreetly sink threats from the ocean. The goblins threw their lot in with the orcish horde, though a lot of goblins did maintain their neutrality. After all, there's nothing more profitable than trading weapons with both sides during a war. Goblin society is made up of multiple cartels, each led by a trade prince. 
one trade prince, thought to be the leader of the Steamweedle cartel, was approached by an ambassador of the Horde, who offered the prince gold and riches if his cartel would provide the Horde with machines and goblin technology. Convinced that due to their success in the first war that the Horde would win the second, the trade prince agreed. The goblins very much fulfilled the roles of the gnomes, but for the Horde, supplying zeppelins to scout and fixing watertight missile launchers to the back of giant turtles to act as stealthy sea vessels, piloted by the goblins themselves. Several goblins took their fetish for explosives to the extreme. Goblin sapper squads running into alliance structures with goblin engineered explosives and detonating them, killing themselves and all that stood around them, whether it be made of flesh or stone. The trade prince and his cartel would later realise their mistake, as the Horde would lose the second war. They hastily pulled out of their exclusive agreement and went back to being neutral again. By staying with the Horde, they were losing the profits they could be making off the Alliance, and they were getting a little tired of running to their deaths. After the war, the rivalry between goblins and gnomes continued, but in more amicable, less violent situations. Previously, in World of Warcraft, gnomes and goblins would pit their rocket technologies against one another on the Mirage Raceway in the Shimmering Flats racing each other to prove who could create the fastest rocket-powered vehicles. The rivalry became a lot more violent again when the Bilgewater Cartel joined with the Horde during the Cataclysm expansion. But that's another tale for another day. Who knows, Blizzard may be yet to announce a Trade Prince Gallywix legendary, leader of the Bilgewater Cartel. Then I can tell you that tale. I really hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the gnomes, goblins and their rivalry. If you have, why not share this video around? Give it a like and subscribe to the Six Gamers channel, we really do appreciate all the support. If you want to burn down my house, why not refrain from that and just give this video a dislike? In many ways that's just as bad. If you like the art that you've seen, all the artists I could find are in the description below. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more Goblins vs Gnomes related lore, or just to get back to our regular episodes next time. Thanks so much for watching guys, happy hearthstoning, and I'll see you next time for more Lore of the Cards. Goblins and Gnomes, Goblins and Gnomes, both are super brilliant, but you would never know. Everything they seem to make is faulty or explode. Hooray!